Hello, and welcome to Be In Your Bonnet, the show where we share our unsolicited advice on a range of stories sourced from the vast corners of the internet. My name is Xander. I'm Julie. And I'm Cole. And we have each handpicked one story from Reddit, Facebook, and other online communities to discuss with each other today. So kick back, relax, and let us guide you through the internet's most captivating tales while giving you advice you never knew you needed. Today, our topic is going to be money. So we're going to start with Xander with our first problem, and we're going to go right into it. Okay, perfect. So this comes to us from Reddit. My name is Susie. I'm a physician and recently graduated residency. I've been working 60 plus hours per week for 10 years, living on next to nothing and barely making ends meet. Now I have a job and I'm buying a house in a different state. My boyfriend of two years is recently unemployed, not his fault, and will be moving in with me. He's helping me with closing costs, $22,000, but the mortgage, $554,000, is a doctor loan and is only under my name. I got better interest rates that way. He feels it's important that we're both on the title. I feel uncomfortable with this and keep saying that we can refinance later when he's back on his feet so that he can be on the title and the mortgage. He says this isn't good enough. I offered to do it if we had an ironclad agreement drafted by an attorney, but now it's too close to closing to manage that. We were planning to get married someday, but I'm honestly not sure anymore after the arguments we've had over this. What should I do? So he has given her money for the down payment. 22000 sounds like Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, and if I, if I remember what she was saying in the comments correctly, there isn't actually a down payment because it's a doctor's loan, but he's, he's contributing to the closing costs. Okay. And then she's getting the primary loan mm-hmm. on her own. Yeah. Uh, and she doesn't really specify in there who's going to be paying the monthly mortgage, but uh, I mean, where he's not working right now, then it's, it's going to be her. That does sound like, especially where they aren't married, they should have some sort of legal understanding, but I don't know if it was me when we had our first house, uh, we specifically put both names on the loan, but now we've been married for, you know, almost 12 years. If we bought a house again today, I wouldn't be worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, it seems like if they're really a team, then they should do what's going to be best for the, for the house. And in this case, if they're getting a better interest rate with just her name on it, and she's totally fine with refinancing as soon as he's back on his feet. That, that to me seems like that, that would be the best way to handle it. Dude, I mean, I, it, you, that just requires you trust each other. Right. Well, I think, I think the issue here, uh, the issue I take with this is it seems like they're wanting to do married people things without being married. And they're, they're have, th- this is why the problems are coming up, right? And it seems like he has the concern, and I think validly, that she's just going to take his money and then dump him. Um, and the reason why I say that that's a valid concern is because now she's saying, oh, I don't know if I want to get married anymore because these arguments were happening. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like he, you know, he, for good reason, he doesn't want to contribute $22,000. And then, you know, in a year, the relationship falls apart. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, I think the real answer is, they shouldn't be doing this married person thing without yeah. without being married. But uh, that's kind of, I mean, it. I think a lot of people tend to not think of this as like a married person thing anymore. Um, but that's just kind of moving in together. At least I think you're right. I think people don't view that as a married person thing. Buying a house, hopefully people would still. And that, that, that's a that's a 30 year commitment. Well, and, and which is longer than a lot of average marriages are anymore. Besides all the, you know, all the various reasons why, you know, marriage is the option people go with. The biggest one is legal protection. Right. And yeah, I'm not a lawyer, but what legal protection would he have if his name is on the title? Well, would if his name is on the title, to, then he does have legal yeah, protection. Yeah, so I'm saying yeah. if, he, if he's on the title, is his legal protection that he gets half the house if things 
you know, legally go south? Probably. I don't know. I'm no lawyer. Because that seems like a pretty big commitment to her because right. $22,000 is a lot, but the loan that she's taking out is vastly larger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why, I don't know. I mean, definitely shouldn't move in with someone where you're not sure if you're... Yeah, buy you know, a house or, with someone. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, let me restart. Definitely don't buy a house with someone if you're like, I'm not sure if I want to get married now, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I, I sometimes wonder, like, why... What, what do people think the purpose of dating is? I, I mean, if, if that's her boyfriend, the whole point of her dating him is to decide, is this someone I want to get married to? And so, so I think you're right, Xander, that, I mean, if, if they're already doing married things, it's, it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. I mean, she needs to decide first, do I want to marry him before I start buying a house with him? Yeah. Well, and, and where marriage is a legal protection, that would, to me, marriage in that case would, I'm fumbling my words now. I didn't floss what I wanted. <laughs> but getting married legally is a bigger protection than any other reason to get married. Wait, so you're saying getting married to me I, to have legal protection have is more legal, important than like getting married because you love someone? Well, I would, <laughs> I don't know. I think to protect yourself. I mean, I've known people who have gotten divorced and gone through nasty things. And, you know, without the legal protections of marriage, there would be nothing. Yeah, he, he would have no recourse. He would just straight up lose his $22,000. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, unless she was being honest about it and gave it back to him. Somehow. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. But you can't rely on that, especially during a nasty breakup. Yeah. Well, and this is this is, of course, setting aside the fact that she's probably committing some form of tax fraud. Right. Because a twenty two thousand dollar payment from your boyfriend is definitely like a taxable <laughs> gift. Um, and, you know, she hasn't said anything about paying taxes on it or anything. Maybe she's planning on paying taxes on it. But, um, well, ho hopefully they have a good mortgage person who's helping to walk through that part. Right. Yeah. But, so. Would you tell these, this couple, uh, hey, if you're looking for legal protection, go elope, go get married tomorrow? Uh, well, I mean, it sounds like they're not ready to get married. Yeah. That, that is an interesting point, though, because, I mean, my, my brother got married um, a year before he got married. The, you know, he and his wife, they wanted to start getting the, the tax benefits from it. So they went to the courthouse with a couple of friends, signed the documents. And then we had the ceremony a year later and that's for them. That was when they really got married. You know, the, the other one was just a, a, a legal protection <laughs> to give them tax benefits. Yeah. And then the actual marriage, it was a year later. And, you know, depending on the state that they live in, uh, once they've moved in together, it's kind of a ticking, uh, I don't want to say ticking time bomb, but you know, it, Depending on the state, once they've been living in the same house for a number of years, they would be considered common law married anyways right. for the purposes of you know these they, legal protections we're talking about. They, they've only been together for two years, though. I, 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 I imagine it's a lot longer for a common law marriage. Well, I, 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 it sounds like they haven't lived together yet. Oh, that's, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I don't remember that exactly from, from right. what I read, but I think this would be they would be moving in together for the first time. Um, with with this move in this new house. But yeah, I think, I mean, so realistic advice I think would be she shouldn't be taking his money if she's not ready to put him on the title. I, I think that's the best, yeah. If, if she doesn't want him on the title, don't take the money. Yeah. I, I think that's really the best option. And if she can't do it without the money, wait. Yeah. Yeah, get a house that you can afford. I mean, you can always upgrade later. It's yeah. the, the most important yeah, thing. You know, getting she, in. She just got a new job as a, as a physician. She'll have the money eventually. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, I, I did get the impression that she was kind of rushing into things. So maybe she just needs to slow down a bit. I like that. Yeah. Buy a house you can afford without him if you don't want him on the title. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cole, are you ready for our next one? Sure. We're doing the money stuff, right? All right, so uh, mine is also from Reddit. I live with my partner, and before we moved in, we agreed on a 50-50 split for rents and bills since we earned similar amounts. 
We agreed even if one of us gets a pay raise and ends up with more money, that we would split things 50-50 as long as the other person could afford their half. I am getting a pay raise and I am left with around 200 pounds a month extra. My girlfriend suggested I start paying more towards rent and bills, but I refused and reminded her of our earlier conversation. I am also the person who tends to pay more if we go out for drinks or when we need groceries. My girlfriend said that it wasn't fair that I don't pay more, but I just pointed out that she was fine with our agreements when we made it, and she's only trying to change it because I'm making more. She just said I'm being selfish since I am making more, so I should be willing to pay more. How would you handle this? That's, to me, one of the main reasons in a long-term relationship why you should combine your finances. Right? <laughs> Again, it's almost like it's, yeah, it's, I mean, I guess they're not trying to do married things in this case because married thing is combining your finances mm-hmm. and they're, they're recognizing, no, we're not married yet. So we have separate finances, but at the same time, they're having combined, um, living expenses, living expenses. Yeah. yeah. And then, so they're trying to like have the best of both worlds. Well, I, I would, I would almost look at this as roommates because technically that's what they are, right? If they're living together, not married, they're roommates. So, you know, would you, if your roommate got a pay raise, would you go up to them and say, I want you to pay more? I mean, some people people would. would. (laughs) I wouldn't, no. (laughs) So you wouldn't, your advice would be no. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I I, I, I don't like this tit for tat kind of stuff in a, you know, what's supposed to be like this, you know, a long-term relationship. I don't think it's sustainable in the long run. And it extends beyond money. I mean, anytime in a relationship, you're like, we both have to do 50%. That's, that's a recipe for disaster. It should be both of us have to do a hundred percent. Both of us have to give our all to the relationship. He points out that when they go out, he's usually paying. He's not obligated to do that. So obviously he's doing that for, you know, reasons of affection right right and i mean if he wanted to be vindictive he could be like okay i'll start paying more of our, of our rents but then next time they go out you know and basically from now on when when the the bill comes for the drinks he hands her her bill and he takes his bill yeah. the only the only way that that ends is to keep a very detailed ledger of everything that you do with a partner which I don't know. Again, doesn't, doesn't, recipe for disaster. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound like it's yeah. building a trusting no. relationship. Uh, on the other hand, to play the devil's advocate just a little bit, um, you know, I think uh, it is important to realize that these kinds of deals do change. Like they're almost never, I mean, unless the foundation of their relationship is paying for things 50-50, right? <laughs> like obviously there's some things in a relationship that, you know, are going to be, you know, important values and things that are non-negotiable or whatever. But, you know, there's going to be other things where you may feel, you know, deeply about them and they may be important to you, but, and you might think that you have an agreement on them, but people change and people's ideas about things are going to change and situations change and the situations change and that kind of thing too. So, you know, like, I think, I mean, this person is going to have to decide if this deal is so important that it's worth uh, ending the relationship over, you know? And if it's not worth ending the relationship over, then, you know, there needs to be some renegotiation of the deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I I agree. I'm actually kind of thinking myself, like, if my wife and I were doing, like, a 50-50 thing, which I think is nuts, but if we were... Like, and she said, hey, you're starting to make more money now. Will you contribute more? Like, what? I'm, I'm curious what I would And I think I'd be okay with contributing more. I, I'm coming from a marriage mindset. Yeah, you're right? coming from Where a we, mindset. We have combined finances. Yeah. And, well, and, yeah. and it sounds like in their situation, too, that their, their responsibility is also very split. You know, they're not involving each other in... When you're in a married long-term relationship, yeah. especially with children, yeah. you know, you, you say, well, I'm in charge of this. You're in charge of that. It doesn't work that way. You have to be both committed to the good of the, the family unit. Right. And, and you just pick up the slack where it needs picking up. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's why I say a successful marriage is not 50-50. It's 100-100. Yeah. But both people are putting in where they can. And they're both committed to the idea of. Right. Well, and I think, you know, when, when you're kind of thinking through these kinds of things, it's it, it can be helpful to kind of take them to the extreme, right? So, like, they have this deal. How long is, you know, this 50-50 deal going? Like, is this going to be for 50 years until they die or whatever, you know, like, is, is, is that what he's envisioning? Because if so, you know, I happen to know an older couple where they're, they did have split finances and, um, you know, handled things pretty, I, I don't know if it was 50, 50 exactly, but something like that. And, you know, now her health is de- deteriorating and, and, and I guess an important, uh, detail to this is they're they're both the second marriage for each other sure um so they both have like their kids who are you know, like they didn't have their kids together um and they're you know adult children and now her adult children are fighting with his adult children about money because they ne- like they never had the combined finances or whatever so like the tit for tat fighting about money has extended not only from, you know, to their relationship, but also to their adult children's relationship. With, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's become like an even bigger mess than like this, what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Right. Really, I think it comes to commitment. If, if she wants him to up his side of the payment, I think there has to be an up in commitment. For them, maybe that doesn't mean marriage, but maybe it does mean saying, you know, hey, we're in a long-term relationship. We're really doing this thing. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what the final advice I'd give them is, though. Yeah, I think Just, I think like the precise advice would be fact specific, and I don't think we yeah. have enough information. I, yeah, I don't think here, we do to to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But definitely, uh, split finances is one that's. Oh, it's hard. Like it's I think hard. you can make it happen, but it's like I I don't think I could make it happen. It's very situational. It is, and it's all, a little bit generational, also. And I'm sure these are young. I mean, they say in here they're 23 and 25. Mm, yeah. But I know that when my parents first got married, and my dad was a very successful realtor, and my mom was like fresh out of high school, um, my dad essentially gave her an allowance, which just sounds so <laughs> creepy, or I don't know. But um, that, that, that totally wouldn't fly in, in today's society. And, and I almost feel like that what they're doing is kind of what society is telling people to do now, that your, your marriage should be or your relationship should be a, a 50-50 split type thing. Um, but because I, I know there's a lot of people who push back on like, you know, who does the chores, who does things like that. And, and that's maybe some of the details we would need. Maybe she is the only one who's actually cleaning the house. Um, and in which case, maybe she is justified in saying, hey, I'm, I'm doing these things. They they have value. So maybe you should be putting some of what you have value with towards it as well. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I just can't imagine spilling the 50 50. Yeah. So for our third one, I have one I found on Reddit. And it's a longer one. So I'm going to read the beginning part. And then as we talk, I'll give you, he has a lot of edits and a lot of All updates right. that I would give you. So in the beginning, he explains, you know, the characters here. So he is uh, 32 and he has a brother and a sister. The sister is 25 and his parents are older, he says in their 70s. And he's well off and has been sending his sister money. She lives, I says in the city, oh, New York, says she lives in New York. And uh, he's been sending her money to help you know, while she's there, him and his brother. He says their parents are older. It sounds like retirement, probably, you know, fixed income. They can't help as much as she needs. So he's been sending her money. Well, the girlfriend comes in and the girlfriend is 30. So she has said, says expressed her dissatisfaction with the arrangement. They've been saving to put a down payment on a house in the future and the girlfriend says that his financial contributions are hindering the progress. So yesterday when he went to send money, the girlfriend said, we need to reduce expenses. And one suggestion was to no longer send money to his sister. She says, sister should learn how to manage her money better and your brother should contribute more. I told her I feel a responsibility towards my sister 
my brother doesn't make as much as I do. And while she did acknowledge that, she then said I was financially naive and doesn't want me to be taken advantage of. The conversation ended because we both had to go to work, but she told me not to send anything until we've discussed this further. During my lunch break, I proceeded to send my sister some money and told girlfriend this over dinner. She told me she was disappointed, and at this point, I was getting a little annoyed and responded by saying I was not willing to compromise my current arrangement with my sister. Girlfriend got upset and left. Initial thoughts? Why does anyone want to live in New York City? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to anyone in New York. Um, I'm sure it's a wonderful place. It's just so expensive. But, um, my initial thoughts are... Honestly, this is kind of good for him and his girlfriend to be having, like, this is why you're, they're dating, to know if they're okay with what the other person does. And he's kind of drawing a line in the sand, I guess, where he's saying, you know, this this is something that's very important to me. I'm going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. And she needs to make the decision now, you know, is it more important for me, for him to not do this or is it, or... Am I going to accept that this is part of who he is? Yeah, and, and with any long-term relationship, you take a person with their family. Right, and, oh, absolutely. And it's, you know, if he has this strong relationship and strong responsibility that he feels for his sister, I, I would say to be very wary of someone that would question your loyalty to your own family. I think I missed why the sister needs help. She's going to school. She's getting okay. a master's degree. Yeah. So this is temporary. Yeah. In theory. Right. And I mean, it's possible that the sister even plans on paying him back. But whether or not that's the case, I mean, I think it's great that, I mean, that, that her brother is willing to help her out, help her not have like crushing student debts, or maybe she wouldn't be able to afford it at all without him. Well, let me give you some more information. Uh, one thing that may change some opinions on this is... These people are in a different tax bracket than us. So he says, I make about 15.5 thousand a month and I've been putting away four to 6 thousand each month towards a future house. Girlfriend makes about 7 thousand a month and saves around 1 thousand a month for the house. She says she'll contribute more once her student loans are paid off. She says, I pay for rent and utilities. Girlfriend pays for bulk of groceries. And he's saying he started sending his sister about $1,500 a month since his parents retired. Another component is that the parents are retired he's probably on a fixed income yeah, yeah he's alleviating some of the burden from his mm, parents that right. his parents would be doing this but otherwise yeah uh how i don't know how much money that is adjusted for the cost of living of new york yeah yeah well do we, do we know if he's living in new york is that uh, yeah because between the two of them they're making you know a little over two hundred thousand. Well, now he adds he's adding the sister's uh finances she pays about $2,800 a month in rent and three fifty dollars a month in transportation. He, The brother said, I contribute $1,500 a month, and the brother pays seven fifty dollars a month. Parents pay $500 a month. So it sounds like, you know, this sister is being pretty much completely her financed rent, her by rents, her. Her, her yeah. rent is being paid for, essentially. Yeah. That, that, I mean, what was her rent again in there? Her, her rent's $2,800. Yeah, that the the fifteen yeah. plus the seven fifty plus the five hundred that that's pretty close to. So that's a you know covering her expenses. It did say she does work a part time job, but right. you know right. she's focused on school. And where he's making, you said fourteen, fifteen and 15 a half a month. Uh huh. I mean, so he's contributing ten percent of his income. Yeah, a very small amount. That, that's a small amount, and then four thousand a month is going towards saving for a house. That's, so how much is that really? Thirty percent of his income, which yeah. is about what you're supposed to, you, yeah. your your home, or your, your your mortgage budget should never be more than about thirty percent if mm -hmm. you want to have a healthy mm -hmm. budget. And so he's actually doing it just right. And they, I mean, so the, basically, he still has ten after he sets aside money for a home and pays for his, his sister he still has ten thousand dollars per month and again i don't know what the cost of living is for him maybe that's not enough but i mean that's that's still a lot of money yeah yeah and yeah. his girlfriend is also bringing in seven thousand a month right so i mean there's a lot of factors we still don't know he's given us a lot of details but you know we don't know what the debt is like what his living expenses are like those kind of things well he updates again with more information about what happens with the girlfriend 
says, uh, girlfriend and I had a long talk after work and it did not go well. Uh, to summarize, tensions escalated. I told her I plan to continue helping my sister until she completes her degree. And afterward, she would either start working or move back into her parents' house until she finds a job. However, girlfriend expressed her belief that my sister and whole family is manipulating me and thinks I'm naive enough to send her money regardless of how she uses it. I started to feel increasingly annoyed and defensive by her accusations and asserted that it's my money and I have the right to spend it as I see fit. Then I stupidly said that if she really wanted us to buy a house, she should save more and cut back on expenses like nice shoes, clothes, and purses. At this point, she became properly angry and declared <laughs> that she couldn't stay in the same house as me and said that she would be going to her friend's house. Uh, before leaving, she said, call me when you stop thinking like a effing idiot. And, uh, <laughs> then he said, before I could even think, I replied, I won't be calling. <laughs> so, <laughs> he says, I feel I may have irreparably damaged our relationship. So there's still more updates, but what are your thoughts? It's, so far? It's, it's funny how these kinds of like money problems can like bring out other issues that we've mm -hmm. been having with each other in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, I, so just as, as kind of a bit of a tangent, you know, I, um, I lived for some time in uh, Central Africa and I, I had a good friend there who, who was from there and w we had a lot of conversations about, um, him kind of fantasizing, like what it would be like to move to the United States and marry somebody from the United States and that right. kind of thing. And one of the, you know, and like just kind of lighthearted conversations, right? Like nothing like really serious or anything like that. But one of like his concerns as he was kind of thinking through this is like, would she be okay with me sending money back to my family and that kind of thing? So this is kind of a, and, you know, kind of my thought initially was, you know, she might not be, you know. And, you know, well, this, this girl's a this, be. <laughs> yeah. So this, is, this, this scenario is interesting to me for that reason, just because I've had these conversations with, with somebody that I, you know, kind of in a, in a fantasizing kind of right, way. But. Right. So I, I had two thoughts. So in the very first one you read to or first part of this story that you read to us, um, she asked him to wait before he sent money so they could talk about it further. And then he went and sent the money anyway, which is kind of his line in the sand there. But at the same time, I, I do feel like if you're in the middle of a discussion as a couple, it would have been a lot more respectful for him to, to wait, yeah. even if that was going to be his final decision, even if he knew that was going to be his final decision, he could have at least had the respects to wait mm -hmm. and discuss it. Yeah. Um, but then I lost my train of thought because I was going to say something about that she was just acting cray cray in that last one. What was the third update again? Oh, that uh, he says, uh, maybe you should stop paying for clothes and shoes and purses. And <laughs> she says, call me when oh. you stop thinking like an oh. idiot. And that she was saying that his family was being manipulated. Oh, manipulated. Yeah. Like that is kind of a manipulative statement. It's, I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe they are. But, but I do feel like you mentioned before, she's just kind of putting a wedge between him and his family. And that's, mm -hmm. to me, that's a that's red flag. That's always a red that's flag. That's a red flag. I mean, it's one thing for a person to decide themselves if their family is, you know, having a negative impact. And that, to me, is a very serious, you know, Or even if, decision. like, a couple, like, kind of together just kind yeah. of drifts away from from yeah. that family. Sure. You know, whatever. But if it's, like, yeah, I don't know. But, but it sounds like, I mean... It sounds like this brother didn't even start sending his sister money until the parents hit their retirement and were set on their fixed income. I mean, that that to me doesn't sound like manipulation. That sounds like a tight knit family yeah. that helps each other. And yeah. I mean, that's that's what I want to be able to do for my kids is to to help them out financially when they need it. And and I hope that my kids will help each other if they need it. Like like. If, if I do have a child that becomes like a doctor or something like that and, and is far more wealthy than another child who becomes like a teacher or something, I hope they will help each other out. I, I hope that they'll, they'll have that kind of a bond. Well, uh, he gives even more updates here. Oh boy. Let's get, let's see. Yeah. He provides more information about the relationship. All right. Let's says see. we started dating January of last year, officially became a couple by the end of March. She moved in with me in May. 
In hindsight, I must admit the pace of the relationship was driven by my infatuation rather than the development of a deep connection. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Her fun-loving nature and beauty had an influence on me, uh -huh. Uh -huh. causing me to overlook the misalignment of our values, <laughs> which is pretty on the nose, it sounds like. So he says, regarding her relationship with my family and friends, she seemed to get along with everyone, although I feel she's never liked my brother. My mother's made significant efforts to make her feel welcome. Uh, likely due for her desire for grandchildren. So obviously the family <laughs> is thinking this is a serious, serious relationship. <laughs> On the other hand, my relationship with her friends and parents were different. I couldn't help but feel they saw a girlfriend as being out of my league for some reason. And some of her friends even told me how lucky I should consider myself to have a girlfriend in my life. There were also some other warning signs I chose to ignore and I want to share them now. Girlfriend wanted to impose restrictions on how often I could visit my family throughout the year. Big red flag. Yeah, really there's, big red there's flag. that way. She's you know? just hammering it in there. Less than a month after moving in with me, girlfriend leased a BMW, con contradicting her previous statements about wanting to pay off her student loans quickly. At the time, I found it strange, but didn't raise any objections, thinking that girlfriend deserved to treat herself after years of schooling. Over the following months, she continued splurging on expensive clothes, shoes, purses, coats, and more. Looking back, I doubt she was completely honest about how she was managing her student loan payments. I think he said her student loan payments were about two and a half thousand a month. Girlfriend regularly urged me to distance myself from some of my friends, citing reasons like them being bad influences on me or me spending too much time with them. When I mentioned that her friends didn't seem to think highly of me, she shrugged it off, claiming they only wanted what was best for her. So fast forward to today, as most people recommended, I kept my word and didn't call her. Instead, early this morning around 5 a.m., she texted me suggesting we meet at a local cafe to discuss our future. He, this is, this is the final update. So I'm going to get your guys' thoughts before, before, before we, we finish. finish. I've been there. I, when I was, um, my, my first year in college, I, a girl that I worked with that, that was, she was, she was a model, like, like she had done modeling and, and things like that. And, and for some reason she, I mean, I, I know the reasons now and stuff, but, but she wanted to, to date me a little bit and it was incredibly flattering. It was incredibly flattering to have someone that, that was that beautiful that, that wanted me. And um, I, I was so blind to all the red flags because they were all there. And, and I had that same mindset that, that, that like she was out of my league type thing. But, but the reality was, is honestly, from like a healthy relationship standpoint, I was out of her league because there were so many red flags. Unfortunately, healthy <laughs> mental well-being isn't very flat. <laughs> right? Right? So so it's like, I, I get why he, he would dive into a relationship fast for that, but man, he should dive right back out. If, if, if those red flags are there, especially the, the wedges between the family, that that's just never a it, good sign. It, you know, it, the way that he talked about it, it sounds to me like he wanted a relationship for the sake to have a relationship, yeah. uh, especially with his, or was it his friends saying that he's lucky to have anyone interested? Her, I think it was her, her, friends. Was it her friends. It was her friends. Well, yeah. you know, the, uh, that might change what I'm saying a little bit, but you know, um, the fact that he's saying that, you know, it sounds like it bothers him and maybe he, he might kind of subconsciously feel the same way too. And maybe worried, you know, that like, it's her or nobody, you know, but, you know, like as, as good and as happy as a relationship can make you, it can also make you, you know, so miserable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Sometimes nobody might be better. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, definitely for now, for this person, I think for sure. Like, I don't think, I wouldn't say we're 100% in dump her territory yet, but we're like 95% of the way there, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, Another thing I wanted to bring up was um, it to me, the trying to cut you off from your friends and family screams insecurity on her part and insecurity in that way equals immaturity. Uh, so that's I, I, those are huge red flags to me. In, in yeah. the experience that my extended family has had, it also screams gold digging. But, uh, you know, um, to, I, I'm and speaking, it sounds like he's successful. So, yeah, I mean, that yeah, kind I mean, of fits. It sounds like he makes quite a bit more than her. And just, uh, um, yeah, just I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, one experience of one uncle, you know, with kind of jumping heads first into a relationship with someone who was driving wedges between him and his family. Yeah. It, 
a lot of it right. was about the money that he made. Yeah. That's true. Okay, so here's uh, the last update. It's kind of long, but it's, it gives a lot of closure. So uh, he goes to the cafe to discuss their future. She began expressing her hurt over my failure to call her, repeatedly emphasizing that I needed to be reasonable and prioritize a relationship so above all, all else. Her. Yeah. yeah. I noticed her consistent use of <laughs> you instead of us or we. When I pointed this out, she claimed that her initiating this meeting was proof of her commitment and that if I were truly committed, I would have called her the moment she left. At that moment, I chose to remain silent, and I believe she interpreted my silence as her winning the argument. She then shifted the conversation to finances, bluntly stating that our best course of action was to ensure neither of us carried any debt. According to her, the only way to achieve this was with me starting to pay some of her loans. <laughs> All about her. <laughs> I insisted that this shouldn't interfere with my agreement to support my sister. So... If, he says, if I did agree to pay her loans, but girlfriend asserted that it would impede our progress as a couple, which, I mean, going back to the original point, I still see no problem with him giving his sister, when he makes that much money, $1,500 a month. Yeah, that, that that's a drop in the bucket for yeah. him, and it's such a blessing for his and, sister. And yeah. if she's wanting him to pay off her loans, I mean, she's really, she's really stretching herself here. <laughs> if if she's gold digging, my advice to her would be, you know, take take what you can get. Fifteen hundred dollars is going to make that much. Start of a slow, ramp up later. <laughs> <laughs> so I argued that supporting my family and progressing in our relationship should not be mutually exclusive. Which, yeah, yeah, he's right. In response, <clears throat> girlfriend declared that if we were both serious, I needed to make her center focus, which I somewhat agree with but also i think that's a very manipulative statement no no i i can't agree because that that's a very I that, don't know. that is a doing marriage things before you're married well that thing. also but but it's also like it, it shouldn't be her focus it should be us focused true true it should like like his, his commitment should be to us yeah it sounds like she wants him to focus on her, but she's not willing to do the same. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The, 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 this is a one way road for her. Yeah. She then added that even if we did agree to allow me to continue supporting my sister, he puts allow me in italics. <laughs> it wouldn't end there as these things never do. With this, she then began inquiring about my parents, pointing out their advanced age and suggesting that they would soon require regular support. Without hesitation, I firmly reiterated my stance that if my parents ever needed any form of assistance, I wouldn't hesitate to offer it. She followed up by saying, even if they wanted to live with you, to which I replied, yes. She pressed further, asking, even if I say they can't? Once again, I responded, yes. At that moment, girlfriend stood up, saying she was disappointed to see the kind of person I've become. Sounds like <laughs> he's always been that kind of person if she wants him to change. Yeah. And how she and her friends had always sensed there was something off about me. In response, I stated, if you believe that, you shouldn't have moved in. She was unable to offer a retort. She then began making remarks about how it was only a matter of time before I would beg her to take me back. We won't. I firmly <laughs> told like a her. giant bullet that's just been dodged. <laughs> I firmly told her that the only thing I would, I would be asking was for her to take belongings and return my keys. She tossed the keys at me before making several comments, asserting that she didn't need me and that I had wasted her time and how I had greatly disappointed her. I said, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm no longer obligated to listen to you complain. With that, she stormed off. About an hour later, I got a text from one of her friends that they were coming without her tomorrow to get her stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that once they do, I can put this whole thing behind me. I mean, she's right. He, yeah. he did waste her time. She was looking for a sugar daddy. And <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't ready to be that. And he wasn't, yeah. So now she's got to go find someone else yeah. to pay all of her bills. Yeah. Hey, you know, to give her credit, though, like she asked some probing questions. She heard an answer that was, you know, like crossed a line for her. And she's like, okay, we're done. You know, like she knows, she knows what the, she wants. That's the right thing right. to do, I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 So Well, you know, earlier when he says, I think I overlooked our misaligning values. I think that hits right on the nose to the problem here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and is the nicest way to say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think many of us would not agree with her values, but that's not to say that there isn't someone out there who does. <laughs> I hope she finds them, but I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm willing to say that, that those are just bad values. I'm sorry. Just, well, he dodged a bullet. To me, the nail, he dodged a bullet. The nail in the head is saying, what, what about your parents? And he says, 
I, I'd support my parents. Yeah. And I don't know. To me, that's the mark of a good son who's, you know, responsible. And yeah, for me, that would be a, a turn on instead of a turn off mm. to know that my <laughs> husband was invested but in his you, parents. You know, like that's, that's an important thing to think about though, yeah. you know, cause I, you know, I think that's the kind of, well, going back to what I was talking about before with the uh, older couple that I know where now their families are fighting over money, a lot of that has to do with taking care of the one whose health has deteriorated and not agreeing on, is she going to live with someone? Is she going to live in a home? Is she going to, you know, whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. talking about that stuff ahead of time isn't a bad thing, but yeah. but I think like her, her response to the answer was... Right. Well, and, and I'll, I'll backtrack a little on her being a horrible person, which I still kind of believe. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, if that's something that they discuss beforehand, if she if she's like, like, like maybe they've been dating for, for two or three years. They've had a lot of interaction with her parents. Um, she's a good person. Her parents are good people. But for some reason, there's just some personality bumping heads type thing. If she's like, hey. I'm not going to feel comfortable ever living in the same house as your mom or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that would be valid to me. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you know, when the time does come, it would, it would make more sense to find other arrangements for the parents mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. But, but this early on in the relationship for right. her to make that demand when she doesn't even know him or his mm -hmm. family. Um, I know I've had conversations with your wife about um, her expectations of the future and taking care of ailing parents or, or siblings, or siblings or, yeah. in that regard. And I know that I've had discussions with my husband in that way because I'm the oldest, your wife's the oldest. In some ways, you know, we do feel an obligation. To take care of our families. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's probably a conversation I should have because I'm also the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the third forgotten child. I mean, so. <laughs> your dad's the only one that's old enough to start thinking about that yet, but. Yeah, I know my, my dad, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, what's our what's our overall take on on this relationship? I think it was and, headed for breakup, whether it was this or something else. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think he made the right decision. And like you said, the nicest way to put it was misaligning values. They they just weren't a fit. Yeah. But they sh they were they were trying to do married people things without being married, and. But again, this is the point of dating. Yeah, that is yeah. the point of dating. Mm -hmm. That is. Yeah. So I, it's good they didn't get to that point. But they were trying to put a down payment on a house. That's true. And they, live together. They were living and, together. Yeah. 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 She wanted him to pay her student loans, which, you know, he didn't agree to. But Well, and I mean, when any of us were dating our current spouses, um, would you have even considered paying their debts during the dating phase? No. I was too poor to like. Yeah, but even if you had money, I, I mean, I didn't like, have I didn't have money enough to even have debt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, but it's like because I think all we all feel very strongly that the, the or at least I assume we do. I don't know that the the, um, the finances of a married couple are, are combined. It's not yeah. my finances, her finances. It's our mm -hmm. finances. Yeah, but that was never even a consideration during dating. No, no, not during dating. No. I mean, yeah, during dating, my finances were mine, her finances were hers. Yeah. And when we were engaged, it started merging a little bit as we were planning, okay, what kind of vehicle right. do we need? Where are we going to live? Things like that. But until we got married, it wasn't really together. Yeah. And in, in that like serious courting phase, even beyond dating, when, you know, you're talking about being engaged or you are engaged, those conversations are really important to have. If right. this couple had gone on to buy a house or get married and hadn't had these kind of things pop mm -hmm. up, they may have had a really rude awakening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then especially if they brought kids into it and then had went through nasty divorce. I mean, that's yeah. the kind of thing that can reverberate for decades or even generations of families. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It, um, you know, I, I didn't actually read this study. I just read about this study. Mm -hmm. But um, it suggested that, you know, there, there's, there's quite a few couples that will live together before they get married. Um, and then they'll get married and then they'll get divorced. Um, and it's the, this study suggests that part of the reason with, of that is them suddenly combining their finances where if you have a couple that's living together and they've kind of already like, they're basically 
married and everything except for name, right? And they're living that married relationship and they've combined their finances already and they've already gone through the stress of that merger or whatever. And then they get married down the road, like they're not going to get divorced because it seems that the combining assets part of it is the stressful part that puts the pressure on the well, relationship. Well, in the story you yeah. told, the, the 50-50 couple, yeah. I, I think, you know, they, well, that, that, that's, if they get married, that's headed straight for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think money, money, what do they say? Money is like the top reason for a divorce? It is like money and infidelity? Money, yeah, well, I don't know if it's infidelity, but sex in general. Yeah. Um, and, and I can't remember what the third one is. I think it's raising kids, yeah. actually, if I remember right. Maybe. Uh, the differences on how you want to raise your kids. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, can you just think how stressful that would be, 50-50? Like, you'd, there, there would always be minor adjustments. It's just like, oh, now you have this, and now we have to adjust this. And you have to, I mean, it, it would just be so stressful trying to always manipulate that to always be 50-50. Well, that, and that's why like, it's so bad. Unless, unless both of you are like both like looking at the books every single day, you know, yeah. which which also sounds exhausting. Exactly. But, but it, it, like that's probably not going to happen. And what's probably going to happen is what happens in every relationship is there's one person that kind of manages that or whatever. But then, you know, like every six months, there's big blow up fights about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, all of a sudden, you, the, you owe me money. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the part the, the the partner who's not the bookkeeper, you know, finds out about something or, you know, is like, I thought we were doing it this, you know, I thought, you know, whatever. Like it just, it sounds like a recipe for disaster. It's funny in, in our relationship, uh, the way we've divided the, the responsibilities of the finances is Je Jessica does the, um, bill pay, you know, like, like monthly bills, things like that. And, and I do taxes. And I think both of us feel like we, we're, we're, you we're got doing, the better yeah, we got the better end. <laughs> <laughs> I only have to do stuff like one month a year, which is, which is great. So then it gets done and I'm done. Um, and Jessica has everything sound like automatic bill pay. So she barely has to do anything either. And, yeah. But it, it works out great for us. You know? Yeah. And I think everybody, you know, through trial and error and probably arguments finds their, yeah finds their groove and it's going to be a little different for everybody. Yeah. But yeah, it's not the end of the world to argue about money. It's just, yeah. you know, you, yeah. it's how you argue and how you resolve it. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I was going to say the 50, 50, I think you, um, you're, you're losing an opportunity to let things go. If you're going to be that, you know, precise about how you split things, I think there's, you know, the, the number one key to successful marriage, I think is forgiveness. Yeah. And I think you would lose out on that opportunity. Well, kind of, kind of going back to what I was saying about, like, they made a deal, but deals change, right? Like right. you gotta, you like, you gotta let that kind of stuff go sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of times, I mean, this is what I've found is a lot of times, like, if you just give yourself like, I don't have to decide right now, I can decide in like three weeks or something like that. And like in the moment, you're like ready to dig in your heels and battle in the trenches over your position. And then three weeks later, you just don't really care as much anymore because yeah. you've had some time to kind of soften on that. A little Another bit. reason why I never go to bed angry is the worst advice ever. Yeah. Give yourself three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Go to mm -hmm. bed and then go to bed again for three weeks. Well, and I mean, when you're sleep deprived, <laughs> <laughs> the worst time. To argue. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I mean, sometimes a good night's sleep, you wake up, and you're like, oh man, you know what? That really isn't that big of a deal like I thought it was last night. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. It's okay to go to bed a little angry and wake up and realize, oh, I was just sleep deprived. I just needed a good night's rest, and now, now things are in perspective in my mind, and I'm okay with stuff. Yeah. Well, and on the on the flip side too, like you also well, your your position softens after a little bit of time, the partner's position usually softens after a little bit of time too. And then you're able to come up with, you know, a reasonable a mutual, compromise, which yeah. will a lot of the times will be really close to what you wanted anyway. Yes. Right. So, and, and in the heat of an argument is probably when you feel least emotionally connected to your partner. Right. And, you know, giving time to, you know, be clear headed can do a lot. This has been Be In Your Bonnet. We believe that sometimes the sweetest nectar of wisdom comes from the most unexpected sources. Remember, here on Be In Your Bonnet, you, the audience member, are not just a listener. You're not just a viewer. You're part of the hive.
The world is filled with buzzing minds and unsolicited wisdom. Why not join the conversation? And if you have a problem you would like us to solve for you, please comment on YouTube, tag us on social media, or email us at mailbag at buzzcastmedia.com, and you may be featured on a future episode. We have new episodes releasing every first and third Friday of the month on YouTube or your favorite podcast service. Thank you, and until we meet again, this has been Be In Your Bonnet. 